Hello, beach friends. I'm getting a little worried about the day I go to the beach and nothing all that exciting happens, but beach friends, today is not that day. We are going on a self-guided beachcombing tour on Key Waden Island, and I'm getting there on the Hemingway Water Shuttle. And I have a little story about these folks I'm really looking forward to sharing. Now I'm with a whole bunch of other people that are ready to get out there and do some exploring. And it's likely going to be years before I stop talking about that nasty hurricane that blew through this area. But today we're gonna to be concentrating on what fabulous things I come across on my trip to Key Waden. We're gonna talk about generosity. I'm gonna tell you how I tackle an island with other shellers. And we're going to talk about fantastic surprises. So if you're ready to start our salty adventure, let's go to the beach. with most shelling tours because you're going to be on a boat the dolphins like to come and say hi so it is pretty typical if you're on a boat going on one of these shelling tours you will see some of those dolphins now we are approaching Key Waden, and these are just a couple of the little sandbars that you're seeing on the way there it's about a half hour ride from the marina out to the actual island of Key Waden, and I filmed this late in November 2022. Now, when you're going on an excursion like this, the boat pulls up, everybody piles out, and there's no opportunity really for you to be the first one out there per se. So that would be my recommendation to kind of get in front of everybody. Wait, let me just get this garbage. That's not the kind of shelling that I want to do today. I really want to relax, take my time. That family right there, they did get a horse cock. So there is something to be said to kind of be the first one hitting the beach, like this area right here. I am the first one hitting the beach here. There's an awesome alphabet cone just sitting there. So when you're the first one, you know, you kind of do have first crack at those opportunities, but it's just not the day I wanted to have. I really kind of wanted to take it a little bit slower, really appreciate maybe even some of the more common things like these giant Atlantic cockles. So I'm gonna take it easy, take my time, and just appreciate all the awesome things that are here. Again, I'm not gonna be the first one out there, but I suspect I'm not going to be disappointed. And also for you people who are learning your shells, I'm gonna to try to take my time identifying them. That is a Florida cone. So you all get an opportunity to kind of go ahead and figure out and identify that shell before I call out the name. And this I will be saying quite a few times today. That was a Florida fighting conch. And this one's, this one's pretty easy. I mean, you don't really confuse that for too many other shells. That is a lightning whelk. It's a nice size. All right, it's got a couple little, little divots in it, but that is okay. And this shell is kind of interesting to me. This is a mossy arc and it always kind of looks just weird. It kind of looks like it's half made or just not fully formed. So definitely off to a good start. A couple of fun shells. Oh, hello, little tiny banded tulip. Yeah, little tiny shell. What's this? That is a Florida fighting cock, one of those little ones, a juvenile. Oh, all right, you know what that is, a sand dollar. Unfortunately, it's missing a couple pieces. I'll leave that here, but I'll go ahead and switch that out with this lovely banded tulip. And I, I, don't, know, I don't know what it is about the banded tulips. I kind of tend to not pass them up. That's another one of those shells that I just really, really like. Down here, Key Wade and Marco Island, they're relatively common. Up a little bit more north, not as much. And maybe that's why, because it's not like I find them at every single beach I go to. Hard to say. But that gorgeous zigzaggy fighting conch is another one I just really can't resist. Ooh, excellent. You have a moon snail. That is a shark eye moon snail. And it is a true shark eye. Delightful. 
Oh, nice color on that fighting conch. Look at that gorgeous orange. Yep, gorgeous fighting conch. And these are so fun. So this is a ribbed cantharis. I think this is probably one of my favorite shells on the small side. They don't get all that big, but I just really, really like those ribbed cantharis shells. Oh, what are we going for? The lace, oh, Murex, sorry, I said it a little soon. So that is a lace Murex. Really nice color on that. Oh, that's some really nice color on this too. So that is another moon snail, one of the colorful moon snails. Awesome. All right, off to a pretty good start. Yeah, I just kind of let everybody go ahead. That's okay, y'all. Y'all do what you're gonna do. I'm just gonna, like I said, take it easy, kind of mosey on along, see what kind of goodies are here. Appreciate, do a little bit slower, take our time, and appreciate all the other goodies that are here. Another lightning whelk. And don't get me wrong, it would be nice to find one of those big old horse conks. It's just a different type of shelling. I kind of like this. I like to take my time, walk along, I don't usually sit down and dig through piles. That is a big old lettered olive. So it's just, and look, there's no right or wrong way. I'm hoping I'll get a little bit of help with this. I would have ordinarily kept that shell, but it's got some, what I suspect is living stuff on there. I don't know what that is. I, I don't, I don't even have a, a clue. If anybody does know, if you could leave me a comment, that would be awesome. So like I said, I suspected that was alive, so I wanted to leave it here at the beach. And then that banded tulip, well, that's a nice size banded tulip. Nice aperture, so yeah, definitely gonna hold on to that. Awesome little seashell. Mm. And the orange on that one. <laughs> Yeah, the fighting conks are pretty awesome. Oh, an egg cockle. Awesome. I don't find those often, but when I do, I definitely hold on to them. So that is an egg cockle. And I really want to be in the water, but it's, I can't see. I can't see what's going on. And there's, you know, there's great stuff up on the beach. So you know, I go, I peek, you know, I stand there. It's kind of an exercise in frustration because you can't really see anything. So, okay, go back up onto the beach and keep trying. I'll probably keep poking in the water, see if I can find things. Wow, that's gorgeous. That's almost black. And that's another thing, again, I do go on and on about the fighting cocks because there's just so many different varieties. This is the most gorgeous tinted cantharis I have ever seen. I got to tell you, like, I do pick up these shells and I really just... I don't really understand the appeal of them there. I was very concerned that it was alive. It's not, it's just like a little piece of stone or something jammed in there. But that is the most gorgeous tinted cantharis I have ever seen. I think that is just beautiful. Now I kind of get it. I'm gonna be on the hunt for more of those tinted cantharis. So I'm kind of kind of looking at that purple, perplexed by the purple on the inside and probably enough to convince me, yep, I should probably definitely hold on to that. And a nutmeg. It was so dark, I thought that might have been a true tulip, which is also a little bit pointy, but that is a common nutmeg. Awesome. So, so far, pretty good variety we're finding. So this is a calico scallop. Very nice color on that. And it looks like the it was very very cloudy in the beginning of the day it looks like that's gonna burn off just a bit it's gonna end up being a nice day out here oh a little bit of sunshine another banded tulip and a little worm snail it's kind of missing some of it i don't care i like them anyway awesome little worm snail and a banded tulip Ooh, it just stands out you see it gorgeous so this is another colorful moon snail is quite colorful. So it's the first thing I usually do is just kind of like evaluate the color of it and then I start going into the actual shape. Look at this cute little apple murex. Awesome. It's 
terrific. So that is one of the arc shells, one of the more fancy arc shells. That is a turkey wing, also known as a zebra arc. Oh, that will make up for that other yellow shell that had like the stuff on it. Now it looks like there's just like gunk in there. Nothing that would leave, let me uh, not take that shell home. So definitely gonna do that. Yeah, it's looking out to be a relatively nice day. Now the other shellers are really quite ahead of me at this point. And I'm just like I said, just taking my time, enjoying myself. There's no reason to do any running around. It's beautiful. I'm having a great time looking for colorful goodies like this broad ribbed cardita. Very fun little shell. And unfortunately, you know, with that, that hurricane that came by, there are some things that are still just a little bit on the displaced side. So there's this massive water tank on the beach. I don't know how they're going to get that off. I imagine eventually. So we'll just, we'll check in on it the next time we're here at Kiwaden. In the meantime, looks like tide's out a little bit. It is coming in. And that is just fine. Usually it's a little bit easier to shell at low tide, but this is fine too. And that is a nice little horse conch. Terrific. Oh, that's really pretty. So that is another turkey wing or a zigzag arc, if you'd like to call it that. And then that is the mossy arc and they remind me of each other. I call the mossy arc kind of like the weird cousin and it just feels like it's just unfinished. Like the turkey wing looks like, okay, I made my shell, I'm done. The mossy arc it looks like somebody like halfway made it and it's like, okay, I'm good. It just, <laughs> it just doesn't look done to me. I don't know. Then we get a mossy arc and a turkey wing. So yep, those other shellers, they're way up. So it kind of makes me feel like I have the beach to myself, even though I know I don't. And I also know that, you know, people shell differently. Lord knows I miss shells all the time. And I suspect some of those people are going to miss shells too. I'll be more than happy to add them to my collection. Like this clam shell, this calico clam. Very nice shell. All right, so I'm trying out here. Kind of saw that little sandbar. I'm going to try my luck in this water that looks like chocolate milk, but... Let's see if I was able to get lucky. Oh, all right. The only reason I probably found that was because of the color. So we have a Florida cone. I'm going to try my luck. You can kind of see, but not really. Oh, okay. Fighting conch. And you never know what's going to come up. I mean, especially when you're grabbing like this. Okay. It's, it's, I wonder if I really knew it, if I was just blind grabbing or if I saw something and grabbed, but that is another moon snail, a shark eye. Awesome. Now I think with this one, I did see, like you kind of see a little bit of color and <laughs> the entire shell isn't uh, there. We only have a piece of it and that's okay. Real pretty, top of a lightning whelk. Oh, ho, ho, ho. well, hi there, alphabet cone. And of course I see something like that and it makes me want to kind of like hang out in the water for a little while, but you really couldn't see. It was really, really frustrating. So what I did instead is I got my scoop out. So I did bring my scoop. Oh, I see a good shell in there. So we're going to transport this over to the beach, dump it out and see if there's anything other than that pretty colorful moon snail. Oh, little coquina. Okay, we'll just put that to the side for now. There it is. That's what I spied. A nice, colorful moon snail. And that was alive. So this little coquina is going to have to go back in the water. All right. I guess that visibility in the water frustrated me to the point. I'm back up on the beach. Awesome little worm snail. Fantastic. Awesome. Another turkey wing. Very cool. All right, another moon snail. And from a percentage standpoint, I'm going to go with about like 90% of the moon snails have other drill holes in them, which I find ironic because moon snails 
drill holes in other snails themselves. So just a little bit of irony there. And this, I'm really, I was really missing my birds. I've been doing a lot of shelling on kais, different, completely different kind of island. Kiwi is a lot more spread out. And so I have the opportunity to appreciate a couple of those ruddy turned stones. So I'm gonna be quiet for a minute and I'm gonna let the island speak for itself. Another fun scallop. This is a rough scallop. Oh dear, it has a couple holes in it. You know what? That's all right. <laughs> I've got like 99.9% .9 of the shell, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it. Beautiful, bright coquina. The brightest shells on the beach are those coquinas. Another lovely fighting conch. This one, I'm appreciating the vertical little stripes on it. Awesome. And a spiny jewel box. It's got a little bit of lumps on there. Oh, terrific. While I'm here, I might as well grab this apple murex while I'm at it. Fantastic. Oh, pear whelk. Excellent. One of the two whelks, the lightning whelk and the pear whelk. You can find here now this. I've just recently learned about something that's called albinistic. So shells can kind of be albino, and I think that's what's going on here. So that's kind of an albino shell. So I'm kind of excited about that. I'm going to hold on to that lovely weirdo of a shell. Oh, this one too. Just because it's the coloring, the zigzags. I see a little tiny bit of purple on the inside. Oh, another lovely fighting conch. What do we got here? Okay. A little more on the common side. That is a spiny slipper snail. So you flip it over, you can kind of have that slipper snail ledge on there. But this little guy or gal is spiny. So that is a spiny slipper snail. Oh, gorgeous lettered olive. And I would say uh, those almost always have like shells jammed inside there. It's just the shape of the shell, the way it tumbles. Oh, wow. Awesome color on that horse conch. Beautiful, like brick red. And that's another fun thing, you know, the different varieties of colors. Awesome. Another moon snail. Let's see. Very pretty. Hmm. I think that's a true moon snail either way. Very nice. Oh, it looks like I got grabby with this lace murex. I can certainly see why. I know it looks like it could use a little bit of a cleanup, but really nice size, nice color on that lace murex. Um, totally different. This one's a little smaller, still very lacy. Really, really nice lace murex. All right, so let's talk about how I got here, how that all works. So I came here with the Hemingway Water Shuttle. This is the third time I've been here to Key Waden. Now, when I come and do things like this, it's kind of like free advertising for the business. And so this company told me, look, next time you come, just, just book, you know, let me, call me, just book it. You're not going to have to pay. But I'm kind of in the giving mood. I really want to support and help all of my businesses. So I booked the trip. Well, they went and refunded my money. So I just wanted to tell you that these people are very kind and very awesome. I was trying to help them out, but they refunded me. So it would have cost $52.10 for my round trip. And I took the 7.45 to 12 p.m. trip. So I was here for a little over three hours. 
well worth it. All the information about this tour is going to be in the description box below. And as I find garbage that was wrapped around that little stump there, I will be removing it, whatever I can at least carry with me. Now this I do, I specifically remember this shot because it was the first time I had all finally passed everybody. So I'm now in front of all the other shellers that I can kind of see. And sometimes when you're in front, you kind of, like I said earlier, you kind of get first crack at the good shells. So look, you can get there, run in front of other people. You certainly can. It's just not what I wanted to do. I wanted other people. Go ahead, get your horse conks. Good for you. That's an awesome. These two, these two shells, these two scallops are really pretty. Calico scallops, really gorgeous. So like I said, I had seen um, another family kind of walk around with their horse conch. And I'm like, look, I just, I didn't want to run in front of everybody. I was happy for them to get their treasures and happy enough for me to kind of just meander and take my time. Now, 85% of Key Waden is public. 15% is private. So there are 15 private homes dotted on this island. We just saw one of them and some more garbage that I can carry. So this was a t-shirt from a pizzeria that was in Naples and I suspect that this got blown here from the hurricane so yet more debris I can handle this that massive water container not so much but that I can carry off the island awesome okay here we're looking at a hinged spiny jewel box for me and maybe other shellers I don't know let me know let me know how do you feel about hinged shells I find like they're a little bit more special and I definitely love those hinged spiny jewel boxes. Speaking of special, look at this little weirdo. This is awesome. This is a fighting conch. It is not supposed to be striped like that. Isn't that awesome? So that's a little weirdo. I'm definitely also holding on to that. Now I kind of got to this other area. It's kind of spread out up here. Again, just trying to my, make myself available to my Genonia, which is out there, I'm sure, looking for me. We haven't met yet. And in the meantime, I'll probably grab a couple of beautiful fighting conks, because I can. And yeah, a little bit of, I'm not gonna be able to take that lattice off the island, but hopefully one of the other homeowners will come and find that and put it where it should belong in the garbage. Look at all these shells. So again, I'm here late November. The weather is perfect. I am wearing long sleeves, shorts, got my water shoes. I'm, I'm just really, really grateful and happy to be here. Another awesome lightning whelk. Awesome. And a kitten paw. All right, so at this point I've turned around and so my thinking is I meander pretty far for pretty long. So if I have three hours, I'm gonna meander for two and then kind of make my way back a little bit quicker in that last hour. So at this point, not, I'm not necessarily going quick. I'm definitely slowing down to pick up a couple things like that banded tulip. Oh yeah, gorgeous fighting conch. So it's at this point, I actually broke out my second shell bag. Every good sheller should have some backup. So I got my backup shell bag and I'm literally just filling it with fighting conchs. I have learned that try to get the conks in the way off the island because they really are heavy, but that gorgeous buttercup leucine, not heavy at all. It's gonna go into my regular shell bag. So I am headed back, taking, I'm going a little bit quicker than I did on my way you know, up the island, but I gotta tell you, there is something to be said for being at the right place at the right time. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. But in the meantime, yep, another really, gorgeous fighting conch to go into my fighting conch shell bag. Another hinged spiny jewel box. Very, very cool. Yep, very special to find yet another one of those. And more fighting conchs for my bag. Because I can, and again, once I'm kind of leaving the island, I know I you don't know, have to haul this stuff around with me for hours beautiful shark eye really really pretty something else what okay as i was admiring that in the background i saw this lace murex what wait there's more oh there certainly is beautiful that is another colorful moon snail awesome 
I have found so many cool things. The fighting conks are gorgeous. I'm doing a really good job filling my bag in there. Yep. Fantastic. And I run into another woman and we both commented about the Florida fighting conks. And she said, even the juveniles, the colors, the patterns. I was like, exactly. She gets it. She gets it. So super happy walking along every now and then. Something is popping out and it's making me slow down. Here is another horse cock. Great size on that. <laughs> and my second shell bag. And I'm just so happy. Just kind of walking along, feeling great. Again, so grateful to be here. And thank you all for coming along with me. I really do appreciate you allowing me to come into your home or into your life one video at a time. Here's another hinged fun shell. That is a Sunray Venus clam. Another hinged shell that looks like an elegant docenia. Those, frankly, you can kind of find them all the time, but still just kind of fun. Again, I'm taking my time, appreciating everything. Wow! Full fat buttercup leucine. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. I was finding a lot of the buttercup leucines today. I haven't seen them in a while, so I was kind of happy about that. So, yeah, I know that my trip is kind of winding down. I have 19 minutes before I do need to depart. So I'm, you know, making my way. Now, right out there is that big water container. And that's going to come into play in just a second. Another gaudy nautic or colorful moon snail. And again, the color isn't as strong. And I'm finding that interesting as well. And neat, colorful moon snail. All right, guys, that right there is a horse conch. Now, the only reason I know that is because I had gone out horse conch hunting. I was not making a video at the time, but today I'm making a video. I come across this horse conch. I can't believe it. All right, please behold, please behold, please behold, please behold. And I'm do and doing this, you know, mental thing in my head. Oh my gosh, no way. I really did have horse conks on the brain. I had already given up. I'm not getting mine. I'm not running in front of other people. I'm just not doing it. But the universe said, hey, I want to give you one anyway. So that's what I'm saying about being at the right place at the right time. I, ca I cannot believe it. I really, in my head, I'm doing a dance. I'm jumping up and down. I can't believe I found a big horse conk. I, I can't, and I'm just about to leave. What? So yeah, uh-huh. So that is only, as I'm filming, making a video, that is only the second nice big horse conch I have found. Now, normally I would take it on a whole photo shoot. I'm gonna take pictures and video, but I had no time. I found it like pretty much as I was leaving the island. I showed you, it was about 19 minutes. It does take a couple minutes to walk over there. So I really am. I'm all, almost all the way at the point, just to show you. The boats are over there. You can kind of see them. The end of the island is over there. I'm right by that container. So if you happen to come here, you see that container. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of where I was. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. I really, really couldn't. I was so happy for those other people that they got their horse conks. Like I said, I just wasn't going to run in front of them. It just, it, if you want to get it, you know, you might want to do that. I just wasn't willing to do it. And I still got a horse conk. What? So I really am. I'm over the moon. I'm kind of feeling like a rock star. And I didn't have to carry it around the whole time. How lucky is that? So, all right, I didn't get to take it on its little photo shoot and everything, but the benefit was is I found it and just plunk, took it right off the island. Now, again, like I said earlier, you're gonna see those dolphins. So we're probably gonna see a dolphin fin right there. So you probably will, if you ever go on these shilling tours, you will see a dolphin. Now let's talk about the hurricane just for a second. This is a building on the Isle of Capri and the boat driver said that he saw pictures of waves going up to the third story on this building. And I said, hey, well, let me see what I can find. Wow. So that is that building. I found it on that website and it, that's Hurricane Ian. And that is the surf obviously lashing at these uh, uh, condos, apartments, condos here. And they sustained pretty severe damage from what I can tell from that hurricane. So that is just crazy. 
It's a little bit more damage. These docks are really beat up. And that's why, again, I do feel really grateful because not all marinas survive. Not all these shelling companies survive. So very happy to be going out here with the Hemingway Water Shuttle, again, who comped my ride. So thank you. You guys are really, really awesome. Now, I did recently attend a Fort Myers Beach cleanup. I wasn't able to weigh that garbage. However, for today, I was able to take off 0.67 pounds of garbage. So in total, since about the spring, I've removed 6.2 pounds of garbage, not including the stuff that I was able to kind of help clean up at Fort Myers Beach. And yeah, I just kind of didn't try to really rein myself in with those fighting conks today. So I just collected to my heart's desire and we're not going to look at all of them in this final shot, just kind of like my favorites. So we'll go ahead and start with the fighting conks and look, you got the ones that are striped and really dark, orange, albinistic, yellow, just really, really cool fighting conks. I was super happy with my fighting conks. And of course, we got some of those calico scallops. We got a couple of those calico clams, a sunray venus clam, the mossy arch, the turkey wings, kind of fun. Some of those worm snails. We got that one pair, well, some of those lace murex shells, the banded tulips, some moon snails, including shark eyes and the colorful moon snails, the apple murex crown conks. We did get some of those, some little shells, which were fun. I did find a couple of lightning whelks, including some with a lot of barnacles on them. And then some of the prickly cockles, the yellow prickly cockles, the giant Atlantic cockles, some lettered olives, the really pretty cantharus, the tinted and the ribbed the florida cones a couple of alphabet cones the buttercup lucines the hinge spiny jewel boxes the one little nutmeg and then the horse conk oh my gosh that was so fun totally unexpected I, it, just i can i still can't believe that i found it and basically what i think happened is that the tide came up and removed some of the sand and it was literally just being at the right place at the right time. Patreons, I love you. And thank you so, so very much for choosing to support me and coming along and watching every week. Everybody else, same to you. Thank you so very much for supporting me, helping me, leaving comments. It's really, really helpful and actually helped me find the little organization that I think we're all going to try to help, or at least the one that I think I'm going to concentrate my efforts on. So thank you so very much. Not really sure what's going to go on next week. It'll be a surprise. We'll see. So you have yourself a great week and I'll see you again next Sunday.